My name is Giselle and this is Slow Food Live. If you're not familiar with Slow Food, Slow Food is an international grassroots movement and our mission is good, clean and fair food for all. Slow Food has been a movement since for 30 years. It began in Italy and it is a global community and a global movement and our chapters around the world and in the United States do a variety of really wonderful projects in their own communities as sort of a response to whatever they see is needed in their community or is exciting or is present. So today I'm really excited to have Sapna with us on Slow Food Live. If you haven't been on a Slow Food Live session before, Slow Food Live is simply a way to bring slow food into your home at a time when all of the things that we value might be more relevant than ever. Um, so today we're making masala chai with Sapna who is coming to us from Texas and Sapna is a longtime member of Slow Food and advocate of Slow Food. She's a current board member of Slow Food Dallas Fort Worth, the chapter in Dallas Fort Worth, which is in a wonderful chapter that does wonderful things. And she, Sapna is a culinary wellness expert and an Ayurvedic practitioner. And I hope I'm getting this all right. I'm going to hand it over to you um, to get us going. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you came to do what you do. Sapna is also doing virtual cooking classes after this one. I saw that your Sunday session is sold out, but you have another one on the 17th. So we'll put links for that in when she tells us more. Um, thank you so much for being here with us today, Sapna. We're really ha happy to have you and grateful for your time. So I'll turn this over to you. Namaste, everyone. Um, namaste from my kitchen. I'm here in Irving, Texas. Um, so they call the mid-city, so between Dallas and Fort Worth. And um, this is my little Indian home in America. Um, I am a dietitian um, and an Ayurveda practitioner as um, Giselle um, you know, so graciously uh, introduced me. And um, you know, so I combine both my Indian roots and my Western uh, training um, as a dietitian. I've had clinical experience in a hospital setting for more than a decade, but uh, for the past six, seven years, I work for myself. And I do, um, I do whatever that my heart's desire in, in spreading awareness about um, how to find wellness through food and spices. So I give lectures and talks. I teach uh, cooking classes here. Uh, if you're familiar with um, a grocery chain called Central Market, it's in the Southwest uh, region here in the United States. So I teach at multiple locations in the Dallas Metroplex. Um, I have a YouTube channel and I travel to conduct wellness workshops, um, you know, and I also have brand uh, a line of uh, different spice products and wellness products. So I love that um, um, after creating my brand, Be Spiced, uh, it allows me to live my dream. And I've been seeing, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, the uncertain times that we are in right now, um, you know, and I've been giving a lot of thought and you know, there's so much of chaos and overwhelm, but I also find that this time is a great time to inspire ourselves. And so I took some time during this difficult time and told myself, you know, even though the virtual space is very over overwhelming and I know right now we are in a virtual space, you and I, but it can also be special. So I created a special corner where I opened the doors um, to, to invite people to come into my kitchen, just as I am inviting you right now, um, and you know to cook with me. So I, on Mother's Day, on Sunday, I'm launching uh, my first virtual cooking class, uh, and that is sold out, and I'm adding um, another one. So I'm, I'm having on the 17th and also on the 24th, and I'm just humbled um, by the response that I have gotten to that and people wanting to learn and uh, taking the time to learn from, um, and it gives me access to anywhere in the world. So I invite you to go check that out and join me for definitely some cooking sessions. And as Giselle said, um, you know, first of all, thank you to Slow Food USA for this opportunity. And I'm just loving, I'm just loving the live sessions that um, Slow Food Live has been hosting. And Giselle is, is you know, spunky and all, all just vibrant. Every, all, multiple times in the week, it just lights me up just seeing her, uh, seeing her face. And I always comment on her earring. So you guys, she has the best earring collection, if you haven't noticed. So I definitely log in sometimes just to see what she's wearing. 
but thank you so much for the hard work um, that you are reaching out and having a diverse group of folks from all over the country, um, you know, giving them a platform to share their stories. So today I'm going to share my story and I thought what better way um, to tell you a little bit about chai and come have chai with me and we'll do a little spice chat. So I'm hoping and some of you will make chai with me and some of you can just watch and now you have a, a way to go back to the recording and make chai uh, your way. So chai, you, you notice I'm not calling it chai tea. I'm calling it chai. The first thing I want to tell y'all that chai is tea. So when you say I would, I love chai tea, you're basically saying I love tea tea and that's kind of silly. So let's take, you know, take that part away. So chai means tea. And then what is masala chai? So masala means spiced, a blend of spice. So anything can be a masala. Uh, it could be a savory blend of masala. It could be a sweet blend of masala. And I, I'll show you later. I have some, uh, some of my spice blends too. <clears throat> so I, every home in India, or every Indian home all around the world makes chai every day. It's our most, it's our special time and to sit down and make chai. We always begin our day with chai. There's always an afternoon time of chai. At least those two are very important. I was born and raised in Mumbai, India, and you know, did um all through the early adulthood and I came here to do my master's in nutrition in late 90s but chai time is a ritual chai time is a break time and all offices all over India have a tea break or a chai break multiple maybe sometimes at least a, at least a couple of times a day and the quantity of chai is very different than what you would get in your um, you know, I'm not going to say names of any brands, but the popular coffee brands here in America or any coffee shop. You know, it's not your grande or venti um, size. So, so the amounts are different. Now, I'll, I'll talk through um, the amounts as I continue my, um, my chat with you. Um, but I want to touch a little bit about the spice. What makes Indian chai special is the spices. Now, you cannot make a chai without spices you must at least add one, if not a fancy array or a special blend, at least one. So you could add the most common spice, and I have a little um, spice uh, tray here of some of the common spices from my pantry. And I, my pantry is there, it has tons of different spices, but if I am leaning towards making chai, these are the top uh, one, two, three, four, five, top five spices that I think. This is the sixth one, um, not all the time, but these are the top five. I would say the first and most common one is ginger. Now, if you're just, if you're adding ginger um, in your chai, I would recommend by, um, you know, always keeping a knob of ginger. I have my, um, I have, as I told you, I have a YouTube channel and I have a, a couple of videos on ginger and I talk about the Ayurveda benefits of ginger. Um, but every home, no matter where you are, what part of the world, should have a little knob of ginger because according to Ayurveda, um, ginger is universal medicine. Ginger treats so many different things. Um, and if you're curious, if there are questions, I'll answer, but I wanted to stay focused on the chai aspect too. Um, but at least add ginger. Why? Because the most easiest uh, thing for me to share with you, it helps with digestion. Okay, so uh, we'll, do, we'll do ginger. Um, the other very popular is green cardamom. And I'm gonna see if I can come closer so you can see the pods. So you see, um, these are green cardamom. There's also black cardamom, um, but that's, uh, they're, they're bigger in size and they have a very smoky taste to it. Um, normally, for any dessert, any sweet recipes, um, it's green cardamom. So car black cardamom are only used for specific purposes. So if a recipe just calls for cardamom, be assured that it's probably green cardamom. It's also very medicinal. So um, let me just pause a little bit and kind of divert for a few minutes or at least a couple of minutes and tell you what Ayurveda is. I don't know if anybody has been curious on the chat right now. And Giselle, you can stop me if somebody has any specific questions. Um, so, you know, just, 
I'm, I'm not going to look at the chat. I'm going to lean on you on that. So what is Ayurveda? And if you've never heard the term, Ayurveda is made up of Ayur and Veda. Ayur means life. And it not only means life, physical life, it means emotional life, spiritual life, uh, mental life. Um, so all aspects of, of life. Um, and Veda means knowledge or science. So Ayurveda is referred as science of life. Ayurveda is the oldest practicing holistic medicine from India, and it dates back thousands of years, at least 5,000 more or even more than that. And Ayurveda teaches us to live in harmony with nature. So you hear the words seasonal eating, you hear local foods, all of that are Ayurvedic principles. So I always tell people to practice Ayurveda, you don't have to be born in India. You don't have to wear Indian clothes. I, I, have, I take any opportunity to, to uh, wear Indian clothes, but you don't have to wear Indian to practice Ayurveda. You can be anywhere. I also tell people learning Ayurveda is the best form of self-love because Ayur, learning Ayurveda teaches you how you learn about who you are. What is your body type? What is your mental type? What is your emotional type? What foods you should be eating? You know, what, what, what foods you should be eating based on what time of the day, type, different seasons. Um, so my chai, the spices that I put in my chai in the morning would be different, in the afternoon would be different, at nighttime would be different because I am always trying my best to be in sync with nature. And so, and if you look around us, the, the uncertain time, the period that we are here right now in 2020 of March, sorry, of May, um, you know, nature has taught us a big lesson that she is in control. Mother nature is in control. And, um, you know, I know there are a lot of hardships. There are a lot of hardships and a lot of pain. Um, you know, but there are other aspects too, and nature is thriving and we see that. So I think it's a beautiful time to find connection to our food, to what we are eating, whether we are ordering takeout, Ayurveda helps you to discover how you should be reading a restaurant menu. And, you know, and so that's what I kind of, uh, my focus has always been in, in providing digestible form of information for folks so that you are able to apply that. And that is my passion. Um, that's what um, drives me every single day to create something new. So that was a little detour. We'll come back to cardamom. Cardamom is also referred, I had to tell you two things about cardamom and then we'll move on. It's referred to as queen of spices. It's a very feminine spice, very, very sweet, very aromatic. Also, cardamom is the third most expensive spice in the world. Any guesses on the top two? Let's see, I'm asking you a question. Also, I'm taking a minute to just... Any, any guesses on the top, the most expensive spice in the world? We have, we have three guesses at, four guesses at saffron. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what about the second most expensive? Hmm. Because saff, uh, sorry, because, uh, Saffron is one, cardamom is number three. Vanilla is another guess. Yes, so the uh, vanilla is number two. Okay, so it's the third most expensive spice, and I'm again referring to the green cardamom. Um, cardamom um, pacifies all kinds of body types. I'm not gonna go into heavy Ayurvedic terms uh, here unless there's interest or questions, but think about it. Um, cardamom is good for all seasons, and it's good for all body types. It's also um, very good for oral hygiene and, and um, you know, breath. It's like an actual uh, mouth freshener. So my mom always carries a little tin with her or a little pouch with her. And I have to tell her, since I said my, the, my mom, I'm, try, I'm hoping that she figured out a way to log into Facebook Live and watching, is watching me from Mumbai, India. She's alone there right now and I'm worried about her. And I told her if she's able to figure this out on her own, so she may be joining right now. And I wanna say I love you and I miss you. Anyway, so my mom has, keeps a little um, tin or a pouch and she puts, keeps cardamom pods in there. And try that, you can try that. So toss your chewing gum, 
just take a whole pot in your mouth and let it be in your mouth for about 20, 30 minutes and play with it as you play with your chewing gum. Don't start um, going on it immediately. Let the salivary amylase, the saliva, soften the, the outer skin, and then there'll be a burst of black seeds inside and there'll be a pop of different flavors. So there'll be different stages of flavor changes. And spend about 15, 20 minutes. And my mom does that all the time, especially when she's traveling. Also good for nausea too. So try that. And excellent for chai. And then the third spice is cinnamon. And I have to tell you that if you order chai latte, the first spice that hits you, in my opinion, I don't know about you, is the cinnamon. It's really heavy on cinnamon. And I have to tell you that Indian chai, that's not the first note of spice that hits you when you make Indian chai. The first note should either be ginger or, or cardamom. And um, cinnamon should be like a secondary note of flavor. But cinnamon is excellent. Um, so spices in general, I call them nature's gemstones, that nature edible gemstones. So they are power packs, they are healers. Um, you know, each of these spices is medicine. Food is medicine. We hear that so much, but food truly is medicine. But I also tell people, if you abuse the same food, that food will become poison. Okay, so you have to remember that. Um, you know, just an example I give people is everybody loves Indian turmeric, right? Turmeric is that big popular spice, even though we're not going to use it in our, in our chai today, but you know, we don't, we don't want to overuse anything. Uh, and I always tell people, I tell them, let me give you a secret that no Indian goes to bed drinking golden milk at night and nobody, no Indian wakes up in the morning and has turmeric shots every day. It's a very Western um, you know, way of doing it. So uh, we use turmeric every day in our cooking and in a culinary way. And again, I kind of gave you an example as to uh, for turmeric, even though we're not using in chai, that you've got to be mindful as to what you're doing and why you're doing it. And then the fourth spice is um, cloves. Cloves is wonderful. So cinnamon and cloves both are excellent for upper respiratory health also. So it's great right now. So as you're hearing me that I'm talking about different things, well, so that's why chai becomes a great vessel to get this medicine inside us. So you hear my point that chai is more than a warm beverage. It's more, it's, I don't think we in our home, um, I don't think many people in, have chai for a caffeine pick-me-up. In my home, a cup of chai is a moment of pause. We stop everything. We are having crazy meetings, jumping from one Zoom call to the other, doing our chores. Let's have a chai. So that gives us a reminder to sit down and enjoy that pause. At least that's what it means to me. And I'm hoping that that becomes a ritual for you. So don't look for chai being, um, being a caffeine pick-me-up. Think of chai like I would tell mom, mom, I'm having a little sniffle or my throat is itching. She would choose the spices. If in the morning I'm feeling sluggish, use ginger. In the afternoon, you're feeling a little spacey, too, anxiety is building up. Put a little cardamom with ginger. So you can change up once you are connected to your food and what that food does. Black pepper, the the fifth spice is excellent if you are having um, allergies or stuffy nose and having a lot of phlegm and mucus, crush a couple of black peppercorns in there. Because uh, in Ayurveda, you know, my dietitian brain teaches me uh, the evidence base, which I'm very proud of, the evidence based science and objectivity. Ayurveda teaches me subjectivity and teaches that food. Dietitian brain teaches me food has calories, carbs, protein, portion sizes, all those good things. Ayurveda teaches me all foods have gunas or quality. What is the quality of ginger? What is the quality of black pepper? Black pepper is heating and it's drying. So if I, if my kids, or, and I give chai to our kids, I have, we, uh, we have two kids. Uh, my son is, um, you know, in high school and my daughter is in elementary. And we give, we have chai with them and because we don't worry about the caffeine. Because guess what? Cardamom is an antidote to caffeine. So if you, to the uh, black tea that you're going to put. 
So that's a little gist about um, spices. I want to pause and I want to start cooking because I don't want to bore you with too much. Tell me if this is interesting. Um, if there's any questions, I think I can talk spices all day long, every single day. So you have to like really stop me. So well, yeah. uh, first answer, very interesting. So yes, on that, I'm, I'm going to throw a couple questions at you before we go on, which is um, the ginger. Uh, where do you store ginger? Do you keep it in the fridge? And what are your thoughts on using powdered ginger if you don't have it fresh? Okay, very good question. Uh, a normal ginger, if you have a paper towel, just wrap it up and um, so that there's no moisture leak. And this came, this was in my fridge. Um, and sometimes, you know, the edges becomes a little bluish if it was already a, a broken part. I just chop off that knob. And I think if it's not soft, if it's not smelly, if it's not slimy, it's great. So um, a novel ginger, if it is stored well, stored, is good for a month at least in your refrigerator. Depending on the, the humidity level of your home, you can leave it outside on your countertop, it'll start to shrivel and dry up. Now comparison between dry and, and fresh ginger knob, very different quality. So just like, um, uh, just like all herbs, they are more potent in a dry form herbs and spices. So the dry ginger would be very potent. So you will need only a pinch. When I'm making my chai masala, and I have to, I'm gonna do a little, do a little plug here. I have uh, my brand for spices. So this is my mom's uh, family recipe of chai masala. Um, and so for this, I use dry ginger powder because you need to store it for a long time. But everyday chai, I would really recommend you just a little sliver. So this knob, if you had chai every single day, should last you two, three, four, two, three weeks. You just need a little slice of it in every cup or every time you make chai. That was the ginger. What was the other question? That was great. That was two ginger questions in one. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm gonna okay. keep these other questions for after we, we do the chai with you. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna start um, making chai. So I have to tell you, to make a chai, you need a pot, a simple pot, and I'm gonna just turn it on. I don't measure when I'm making chai, but for just for you, I'm measuring. So, I've, um, so I have filled two cups of water, and I'm gonna put this in here, and allow, so my, my uh, flame is on about medium, and I'm gonna make a little um, concoction of spices. Again, I don't, you can find all kinds, every Indian grocery store has chai masala. And just like every Italian mommy has her own uh, marinara sauce recipe, I would say every Indian mama has her chai masala recipe. And uh, so that, the, you know, my brand, a chai masala is my mom's and my family's heirloom recipe. Uh, but, you know, I don't want you not to have flavor in your chai. You must add some spices. So we are going to Grate a little bit of ginger. So I'm going to teach you how easy it is. Okay, this, this is a small piece here. So a tool that you would need, it's good to have, is a small little grater. And I am just going to grate. You saw how small this piece is? It's about, say, about half an inch or so. You can put slices of ginger, but I feel the best flavor release of ginger is when you grate it. Okay, so that should be good for about, so if I'm eyeballing this, I would say about two teaspoons of ginger, minced ginger, okay? And then I have peppercorns here. I'm gonna be using maybe a couple, depending again, if it's a really hot Texas summer, I'm not gonna put black pepper. Why? Because black pepper is heating, okay? If it's a Texas 100 degree weather, I am going to put maybe less than, I always put ginger, why? Because I think ginger is an ignition switch to our gut health. It's an ignition switch to our digestion. So I will lessen the amount. I will definitely put it in the morning time. There's a purpose for that, but um, maybe not in the afternoon time, but morning, I, you need that ginger pick me up. Um, for today, we have a nice spring weather here. So I think peppercorns would be great. Also, there's lots of allergies going on, lots of pollen here. So I think that would be really good. I'm gonna take two pods of the green cardamom. So this is my mortar pestle and I'm gonna come closer and show it to you. And then I have about two cloves. 
let's throw in there because we all need some respiratory support right now. I want to make sure that our upper respiratory health is great. So clove is good for that. And I'm going to be using a little bit of cinnamon. I have to tell you a little bit about cinnamon. So there are different types of cinnamon. This is a Ceylon cinnamon or called as true cinnamon. I think this is better. You see how paper thin that is? That is the most medicinal kind of cinnamon. Whereas this, the thicker bark, um, also the, this is Indian bark, which is still good. I don't even have at home, uh, but I know what you, uh, I'm sure you've seen the American cinnamon, um, you know, the one that you put in your hot chocolate, hot cocoa, that is actually cassia. So that's not true cinnamon. Okay, so I'm using Ceylon cinnamon, just a tiny piece and smashing it. Now, I have a pet peeve of not wasting food and also not using, I see a lot of recipes of chai, they would put the whole spices in there and then they toss it away. I don't think my mom would like that. I don't think mom would approve. So because they don't want to waste anything. So also if you smash it, so you see how kind of just gently smash this, the, the paper thin um, skin of the cardamom is out, all the black seeds are in here. By doing that, you are releasing the volatile compounds of the spices and then also by adding it in hot water, you're exposing, you're again releasing. So heat helps release the dormant magical powers of spices. So it could be hot water, it could be hot oil. So you need to expose spices to some form of heat, okay? Uh, and again, cold heat is different action from Ayurvedic standpoint versus oily heat versus dry roasting. All are different heat processes and they have different effects. So right now I'm just going to let this boil. So you wanna give chai cooking some time. So it takes 10 good minutes, um, So, but you want the water and the spices to really cook together. Next, we're gonna add some black tea. So let me actually talk to you about black tea. I'm just coming closer. So you see, can you see well? This is Indian black tea. So they're like tea granules. I'm gonna let it pour so you can see how thin they are. Okay, so this is called CTC black tea, which is basically, I hope I remember this correct, um, crush, tear, curl, for a way of the tea harvesting and the tea, um, how they make tea. There are different ways. So this is Indian black tea, and I usually have a big canister, and uh, we just use, we go through a lot of tea. So that's um, the black tea that I'm going to be using. Now people say, what about other teas? What about green tea? What about white tea? All those are great tea, but to make, they won't be chai. To make chai, you need the CTC variety or the loose leaf, loose leaf uh, Indian black tea. So this is two cups of water. I, again, I say that, and you can see information on, you know, on my blog or whatever, that Chai has to be, each cup of chai has its own personality, just like all of us. We're all different. And also our moods change. We're the same person, but we may be a different morning person, different afternoon person, and our moods and our personality change through the day. Same thing with chai. So, so allow every cup to con connect with you and let it guide you or you, you have that connection and it, so in the more, and it comes to be on your preference and flavor. So if my husband makes this, a tea, his tea would taste different than my mom makes the tea, even though the ingredients are from the same house, it's that touch. It's that, you know, he may, he may brew it or cook it for maybe another extra minute because he likes a stronger flavor. Uh, mom would like to put less milk because she wants it to be lighter. So you have to figure out your perfect cup of chai.
I'm going to, I always show people, even in my cooking class, the biggest compliment that people can give me if they attend my cooking class or a cooking session is you watch the cooking, see the process, and then don't follow my recipe. That's the biggest compliment. Follow your own recipe, connect to yourself, and you can call it Giselle's, you know, um, divine chai. You know, you can, you can call it whatever you want. That's your chai. So let's see if I can show this without damaging my laptop. So you see the color has kind of changed. So this is just spices and hot water. And I also tell people what I just showed you right now, you can just strain this in a cup, in a cup. This is an excellent herbal tea without any black tea, without any milk in it. You can stop right here and this can become such a medicinal potent beverage that you can sip on if you're having a cold, sniffles, allergies, any gut bloating, indigestion. So wonderful. But we are here to make chai. So this is a tablespoon. I like to do a scanned tablespoon. So say about two teaspoons is what my personal preference is right now, today. You know, it could be, it's a very cloudy day. It's rainy, very gloomy. I really need a little extra strong chai. So I'll probably do a full tablespoon or three teaspoons in it. So now I'm gonna allow it to cook for another minute. At this stage, I like to sweeten my chai. So you wanna have sugar in your chai, real sugar. So we only use organic cane sugar. Um, but you, again, you can say, but Sapna, can I use maple syrup? Can I use brown sugar? You can use whatever, it's your cup of chai. I'm just telling you what my cup of chai looks like, okay? So it's all personal. So also when you're making chai, there is gonna be a, a delicate dance off the flame. Sometimes you're gonna make it medium. Sometimes you want it to be a rolling boil. So right now, I like to just cook it for about a minute or so. I don't like to overcook or over steep or over brew my black tea. One minute, plenty. Then I'm gonna put about two teaspoon, just eyeballing it, of sugar. That's plenty. Give it a couple of seconds. And then other ingredient that is a must in our home when you're making chai is good quality organic whole milk. Again, you're not going to, people say, oh, what about fat-free milk? What about 2% milk? What about plant-based milk? If there are questions I'll answer, but this is organic whole milk and it's two third cups. So again, you can, you can actually put as little as one third cup of milk do as much as two third cups of milk. And we have tried the entire range and it works just fine. Uh, it's also very personal preference. Now, all the ingredients are gone. This is all that you need to make chai. You need water. I'm just gonna recap. You need water, some kind of spice because you cannot have chai without even, you have to, must have at least one spice. Um, so water spices, sugar, no, water, spices, black tea, sugar, and then milk. Now you're gonna allow this to cook. So I'm gonna turn the flame up a bit, and then I'm gonna tell you about this. For making chai, you need, this is an important utensil. It is an Indian chanmi, we call it chanmi, or a sieve, so it's very fine strainer, because the black, Tea granules also are kind of fine. And you can find this online, on Amazon. <clears throat> you can go to any Indian store. My mom loves Indian chanmi. So every time she comes to America, um, you know, she always has a new one in her luggage. And it was, it's a joke between my husband and my mom. And, uh, you know, my husband would never get it. It's like, mom, why do we have a collection of Indian strainers? We just need one. No, we have about eight or nine. Of different ones so she loves to collect utensils i love to collect utensils anyway so we have so i like steel i wouldn't get the plastic one because you're going to be straining such a hot beverage it may just melt if it's a good quality it's not a good plastic i would just use a metal one so i'm gonna i'm just waiting and i'm gonna, gonna keep a close watch and you want the 
the chai to cook into a rolling boil and there'll be a skin formed because of the whole milk. And then you want to cook it again. You want to turn it lower and then cook it again. I'll tell you. So any questions can I answer? I see some, some blinkings happening. Yes, there are a few questions. And I think at the moment, there's some curiosity about how do you spell the name of that strainer so we can go find one. Oh, I, I think if you search by uh, Indian tea strainer, okay, that would be the best. We, there are so many different names. I wouldn't worry about the Indian name, but it's called Chani. Uh, but I don't think it'll pull up with that. Just use Indian tea strainer in your mm -hmm. search. Strainer. Great, excellent. But I would, I would definitely stress on a metal strainer versus plastic. Okay, perfect. Okay. And you, you mentioned that the heating it up releases those flavors the way you want it and like it and the benefit, you get the benefit of it. Do you always serve the chai hot or do you sometimes do the chai process and then serve it cold? So in my opinion, and whatever I have learned from my mom, who's my first teacher and my Ayurveda teachers, you don't, my mom would never let us have, um, if the chai had been just way, you know, if there was an extra cup and nobody touched it. And after two hours, she said, no, that is poison. Throw that away. Okay. Let's make a fresh one. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, the tea just changes the properties and it just becomes more bitter. Um, so I, in our home, fresh chai is what we do. Now I have, I have, you know, I also teach in a lot of yoga community and, um, you know, a lot of um, my yogi friends, they like to make a big batch for the whole week the concentrate, and then they put milk in it. It's not just done uh, in a traditional way, but again, um, it's your way. So if, if it doesn't hurt you, if you have no issues with it, if your body is able to digest it, I have to also tell you that, you know, we hear the term, you are what you eat. Learning Ayurveda and also Ayurveda teaches you, you are what you can digest. If you're able to digest it, there are no signs, symptoms of discomfort, then who, who, who am I to argue with that, right? So, but in our home, we uh, prefer fresh chai. Also, as I said, it's more than a cup of beverage. It gives us, we stop everything, mm -hmm. we do a chai, we sit down and we enjoy our cup of chai. So it's more of a ritual. Excellent. I was just going to say it becomes a ritual, which I think is it's great. You mentioned earlier, like, this is a great time, I think, to get in the habit of rituals like that. Um, they're quite good for us. Let's see. One I'm more keeping time. a close watch because it's, it's bubbling up, but I'm, my ears are here with you. Perfect. Yeah. And so somebody has asked how long you cook the, or the spices, excuse me. Um, so you just saw exactly that much time. You know, you, I did the, the ginger. The ginger takes some time and becomes, makes it cloudy, but I have to pause here. Can you see? How it's rising on the top. I'll, I'll bring it up. I'm sorry. I have to, I have to respect the chai here. Absolutely. <laughs> it needs our attention because it is going to spill out if you're not going to pay attention. So you want it, you want it to come up. Okay. And then once it comes up, oh, it looks gorgeous. I wish I could, I could take a picture and, and send it to you. I wish Beautiful. I could smell it. I, I wish I could scratch and yes. zoom screen. <laughs> Okay, and we can see that it's bubbling up just to the rim there. Can you see through the steam? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so once it comes up to the rim, then I, I'm not turning it off yet. I made it to, to kind of medium low and I wanted to cook another minute. That's the way I like it, okay? So it's up to you. Um, in India, when you go, you have chai in every street corner. And they're called chai wala. Chai wala is someone who sells chai. And, um, you know, so they are cooking this chai nonstop, constantly. It's a process. They're finishing one batch, making another. It's, it's probably simmering there uh, on, a, you know, the extra one. So it just depends. And they say, uh, do you want karak chai? Karak means strong. So, you know, that's a term. It's like, I need my extra, like how you say an extra shot of espresso or something, you want it karak, so you want it nice and strong. So you, you want it to cook a, an extra minute. So that was that, I'm sorry, you were in the middle of that the previous question. Oh, that was, what was the question? No, that was great, that was perfect. Okay. That was a crucial moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, a simple question. Do you peel the ginger before you grate it to put it in there? This is organic ginger, um, so I don't, because I'm gonna be straining everything right now, I'm gonna show you. So 
everything is going to be strained, so no. I, I don't, but you can. It doesn't hurt. You can. And I actually had the spoon kept here. Do you know the easiest way to peel ginger is please don't use a peeler. Take a bag of a spoon and then here. Use the back of the spoon and see how beautifully and easily it peels. And also you don't you don't you don't lose much of the ginger. So you can use the back of the spoon to peel. So time to strain. So also in India, there is no frothers. And you would see this long pour. I'm gonna attempt, I don't think I can. But there's my strainer. I think that's how far I can go. But there are people who have a few feet of pour. And that's what that creates. And if it was mom, she puts every single drop. And then here, let me bring my spoon back. She presses on that. You see how much tea came out? And that's very important to squeeze out every single drop because it has all the juice of the spices and of the tea. So, so that's chai. And I want to talk about portion size real quick. And I also want to show you some of the cups that I have for serving this chai. So this is a street, Indian street style cups. So you would find little, um, you would find, uh, you know, people who sell chai or chai walas, and they have to deliver to a zillion offices because it's chai break happening in an hour. So they have, they carry a whole um, row of cups. They stack in one hand, they have a chai kettle and they pour and they deliver it to every single office desk. Um, so that's called a chai wala cups. So you see the amount here? So this is called a cutting chai. So how you have an espresso, espresso shot? So we call it a cutting means you cut into half or you share your chai with someone. So this would be about four ounces. So chai also, I told you is a ritual. It's also a vehicle to put your medicines. It could, it could be a nice medicinal healing experience. Chai is also a sharing experience. I think it's the most boring if you have chai by yourself. So in our home, we have to have chai. So that's why when you go, go to an Indian's home, you're never gonna be you know, allowed to leave without water or a cup of chai. You know, apart from being hospital, there's just so many levels of the hospitality aspect of it, the spiritual aspect of it, but also chai is to be enjoyed with others. So, you know, invite a neighbor, take it for a walk. If nothing else, sit, in, sit outside and connect with nature, connect with the tree, with the plant, um, and have an experience. So that's your cutting, cutting chai. So I wanna move that. And then I collect tea, teapots and I collect teacups I love. So these came from India. So these are called kullar. So it's a terracotta um, chai. So there is a very unique experience and taste of chai when you are traveling in India through trains. They, um, they actually have, these are very fancy glazed terracotta pots, but in Indian trains or on the street, that cooler, the traditional cooler is actually half baked clay. So having that hot tea with spices in a clay, um, half baked kind of uh, freshly baked uh, pots. The taste, the earthy taste, the astringency is it's completely different. You cannot you cannot have that taste in these glazed uh, cups. So that's an ex a complete life kind of experience in itself. But again, you don't have to go to India. So I want to show you some that came from India. So the first two came from India. These two came from here in America. I found these, again, I have no brand connection, just letting y'all know. Um, these came from World Market. So perfect size, very similar to look at my Indian cups. They probably were inspired by that. And then the, these came from Crate and Barrel. So I collect, I collect teacups. So you can find, but serving chai in something terracotta, I would say is, is you know, if you're making, hosting an Indian chai party, um, find something in terracotta. 
So let's let's do one American cup and one Indian cup. Let me see if I can do it here so you can see it better. Because it's Mother's Day. And I think it's a perfect way to tell mom to just sit down and you have some tea sandwiches or some tea biscuits and make mom chai. My son, who's in high school, he's a ninth grader, he knows how to make chai now. So he says, mom, I'll make you chai. And that's like the most special tea way. But I wanna come closer to you so you can see. So you can see that tea, the color. So that's what you want to look for. Let's see if you can see a different shade in the terracotta. So that's the tea. And you again, so I want to st stress on the portion. You please don't have tea, eight ounce, 10 ounce, 12 ounce, 16 ounce. A, what, what chai you get in chai lattes is not chai. It's a highly constant, I find it very concentrated in sugar and spices, it's not fresh. Again, if you must, you have to, but I'm just saying, it's definitely not chai. And if you are having chai, this should be the portion size. So yes, black tea has a little bit of caffeine, but the spices also have adding, uh, our antidote to the caffeine in there. And you're only having this much, about six ounces, four to six ounces. So that's, that's what I had. Let's see if I have any, let's pause and see if there are any questions. Beautiful, thank you so much. Um, let's see, there are many questions. So okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> it looks so good. And I, I, I wanna comment on a thread in all of our like food and beverage programming on Slow Food Live is that everyone who's teaching us has really encouraged us to follow our instinct and kind of follow your gut in the kitchen. And you're talking about portion size and the spices you like. And I just love this idea of like, like listen to your body, especially the Ayurvedic way, listen to your body and do what it wants. And so I love that your compliment is when somebody strays from your recipe to do their, their own thing. So that's been a really common thread and I'm loving it. Um, let's see, there was, a, we have a question about books you recommend on Ayurvedic living. And so we're going to send a follow-up email to all of you. And I'm going to ask Sapna for a few recommendations there. And please do check out her blog. That is a great place to start. Um, let's see. And definitely my YouTube. So I'm definitely more of a speaker versus a writer. I, if you want to know, I'll get a peek into what I do. Definitely follow me on Instagram. I think that's is my most uh, loving um, social platform. So you get a peek in what I'm cooking every day. I give you a peek in what I'm growing in my garden and a glimpse into my life. I am not a traditional blogger. I, you know, I have to be really find time in all the juggling that I do to sit down and write. But there is a blog on the masala chai. But I also ha I have 30 plus videos, several videos on my YouTube channel. So you can look at that too. But yeah. Perfect. And we'll share all of that with you in that follow up. So we have a question about if you use galangal root instead of ginger ever. Oh, or did, no. no, okay. <laughs> I don't think galangal is an Indian um, root. I, I discovered galangal in America. I don't okay. think there's galangal in India. I love it. I'm sure it's medicine because all food is medicine. Um, I've never tried it in, um, in chai. Um, what I have tried is lemongrass. Lemongrass is very popular. I know it's popular in Asian, um, you know, cooking. Lemongrass, wonderful. Ginger and lemongrass is a great combination. So a little grating of ginger and lemongrass, wonderful. Lemongrass is very healing um, for restoration, also, also for anxiety. Um, so it's great to do that. Excellent. Perfect. And... We also have a question of if you should use ginger it pitta, which I think, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I think you might need to explain a little bit what that means, the pitta, and then maybe if you don't mind, I think it's a little complex, but maybe a simple. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what is our time? I want to do a time check with you. We have 10 minutes. Okay. So let me see if I can explain. Um, but I cannot explain, just throw the word pitta without giving you uh, a little foundation to it. So... If you pick up any book on Ayurveda, any study, you study any Ayurveda, you start with the study of the five great elements or Pancha Mahabhutas, which is a Sanskrit word. It's, it's literally is five great elements and that is space, air, fire, water, and earth. 
all the food that we are having is made up of the five elements. Our body is made up of the five elements, the seasons, the time of the day, all, of, all everything is of the five elements. The room that I'm in here, the kitchen that I'm here is made up of the five elements. From those five elements comes three bio energies or doshas. Dosha is in again a Sanskrit word, D-O-S-H-A. Space and air creates a dosha or a bioenergy called vata, V-A-T-A. There is no English substitute. So please don't even try to make it English. It is a Sanskrit word. Vata is an energy of movement because it's from space and air. Then you have the energy pitta. So I'm coming to the pitta, but I have to tell you, I cannot just throw some foreign word without giving you any context. Pitta comes from the bioenergy, fire and water. So it's the energy of metabolism or energy of transformation, okay? So, and then the last one is kapha or kappa, depending uh, which school of thought you are from or which lineage you're from. K-A-P-H-A, which comes from water and earth, right? So pitta, foods that are high in pitta, so ginger, if you overdid ginger, you can call you can cause hyperacidity because ginger. Let's so Ayurveda teaches us elements, bioenergy. Let's talk about taste. There are six Ayurveda tastes. There are sweet, sour, salty, bitter, pungent, astringent. Ginger is pungent. There's a tiny bit of astringency, but the, it's very potent. It's very pungent. It's warming. So a little bit is an ignition switch. Think of it, ignition switch is needed for the gas to work. But if you did not control that flame and you let that gas just, it can burn the house too. It's the same concept. So a little bit is medicine. If you abuse it, it becomes poison. So if you are already having some, say, gastric ulcers, and that's why I do also one-on-one -on -one consults, you know, with, with the clients and to find their wellness, um, you know, journey. Ayurveda is a highly personalized medicine, very personalized. Um, just it's good for everybody a tiny bit, but if somebody is super sensitive, has hyperacidity, has ulcers, is really pitta sensitive, or already the pitta is aggravated, you only need a tiny pinch. But for someone who say has a sluggish metabolism, is heavier, is really dull, really having um, you know sadness, it really needs that pick me up. He may, he or she may need a little extra. So again, you have to be in tune. So yes, the person who asked the question, ginger can aggravate pitta. And that's why I also balanced it with some cardamom. So it's kind of nice and nourishing. So it kind of counterbalances that. Also, we put a little bit. And then there was the astringent aspect. So tea, the taste of black tea, just the granules is astringent taste. And there's so much power in the taste of astringent. So again, as I said, I can go on. So I hope I answered that. Yeah, you did. And that's really great. And I was hoping you would get into the doshas just a little bit exactly like you did. It's super interesting. Um, I'm going to ask two more questions. One is if there is a particular kind of black tea that you like. Okay, we love it. Um, that's a great question. So I can only talk about Indian brands. Uh, you know, because that's what we choose. That doesn't mean I'm a tea, I collect tea too. I love to try different teas, um, but there's nothing like Indian black tea, the, the loose tea. And again, you can find the same Indian black tea in tea bags. So my mom would say, there's not, you can't make tea from a dip dip tea. You have to cook your chai. You can't make chai from dip dip. Uh, that's what she would tell us. Um, so there are different brands. Um, again, I have no connection to any brands or any, um, conflict of interest there. Uh, <clears throat> I grew up, I am from Bombay, India. My husband is from a different part of India. So we all have, we have our memories with our chai. Chai goes really deep in our veins. So I like a brand called Society. There's another very popular brand called Red Label. Um, you know, there are just so many different brands. So I would say those are two. Then there's another one called Tea India. That's a little newer brand. Uh, but I grew up on something called Society. So again, so it depends when tea is done and it's, it's time for grocery shopping to refill our tea. Whoever grabs the bag first gets the first bids on, on which brand is going to be in our home for the next month or two. 
Excellent, perfect. And sounds like we can look out for the Indian black tea to get this flavor profile that you're after. I know that in my town we have a spice and tea shop. She stocks wonderful stuff and she kind of separates them by where they're from. So that might be a good thank thing. Thank you. Yes. For. And I would say thank you so much for saying that because if you don't find the brands, the two areas and which are very popular, if you're a tea lover, is look for Assam, A-S-S-A-M. So it's a northeastern region of India with tea plantation. I love Assam tea. Or you can go for Darjeeling tea. It's another small hill town, very worldly popular for its tea plantation. So those are the two areas to look for. Excellent. That's perfect. That's perfect. I think you'll be able to find those that are familiar words to me. I know I've had that tea before, so I think they're not sure. too hard to find. Sure. And um, the great question I want to sort of end our little Q&A with um, is how might we vary the spices during the summer months coming up? Or how might you vary the spices you're choosing based on the season and the weather? Thank you. Thank you for saying that. You know, the six spice that I had and I kept it away. So these are fennel seeds. You also see them sometimes in an Indian restaurant by the cashier counter after, you know, so because fennel seeds are cooling for our tummies. And so it's good for digestion. So that's why you find them in Indian restaurants too, because after you eat a spicy meal or a heavy meal, chewing just raw fennel seeds is by itself is very medicinal. But you can also make something called soft wali chai. So this, the Indian word is saunf, S-A-U-N-F, saunf. Saunf, Bali means a tea made with saunf, okay? Bali means with or some. So you can just use fennel uh, in the summertime. Or also, I put cardamom is a good summer spice. I'm not going to put black pepper <clears throat> in summer. So let me also tell you what I'm not going to put. I'm not going to put black pepper. I'm not going to put too much of cloves. Uh, I'm actually not going to put cloves at all, you know. If it's in my chai masala, so my chai masala has about many more spices than this. Um, you know, in, in this amount, there is black pepper and cloves and cinnamon. But if you're buying a tea chai masala, chai masala means a spice blend for chai. So it doesn't have any black tea, just is a, com a mixture of spices. It's okay to put it in a spice blend. So you can make your own spice blend and add some black pepper and clove. But if you're making a, a singular spice tea, how I made like a fresh spice tea, I would choose cardamom, fennel. I, if it's a morning, summer, even though it's summer, I usually start our morning with our ginger. So as I said, it's a good kick starter for the morning. You know, that's because from an Ayurveda standpoint, I told you vata pitta kapha. So, there are different vata periods, kapha periods, and pitta periods in the day. So lunchtime between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. is pitta time of day. You don't want to aggravate your pitta further. So maybe after lunch, make like a fennel tea. So I'm sorry I gave you like different options, not a straight answer. But there's never a straight answer in Ayurveda because it's so customized, so personalized. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's a perfect answer, which is kind of, might depend on the time of day not just the time of year so that's great and also what type of summer you're having what part of, right. part of the world that you are in right and it's spring right now so we're on this cusp of maybe if it's hot during the day and cold at night and so i love the flexibility there and being able to respond to your own environment and situation um i want to honor your time and not keep you or everyone who has joined us today for too long we have a really big and awesome group here today um so I want to mention that I'm going to put the blog post with Safna's recipe for masala chai in the chat here so you can go straight to it. I'll also send that link to you in a follow up. And in that blog post, there's a short video, one minute, I think just over one minute where you're showing us how to make the chai. So if you need a quick reminder or you want to see a little closer or higher resolution, then jump on there and check out Safna's video on the blog post I just posted in here. And we'll follow up with all of you with that email with all the links to all the ways you can connect with Sapna and her great stuff, including those virtual cooking classes. So one thing that I think is kind of fun here, inspired by your chai mix, I think you said that if you're in the Irving or Dallas area, you can order it and pick it up. It also came to mind for me since it's Mother's Day, well, maybe I could make a spice mix and send it to my mom and show her this blog post and say, try this out, we can bring it together, that sort of thing. So. I Absolutely. love making spice mixes and having them sort of ready. <laughs> yes, yes. 
So I would say that choose the five spices that I showed you. If you're making your own spice blend, then do not use fresh ginger. Get um, ginger powder, dry ginger powder, and use less amount. You know, so and you your your instinct will guide you. Smell the spices, see what your mom would like more. You know, I would say you would never go wrong with green cardamom at your as your base mm -hmm. because it's very feminine, it's very soft, it's very nourishing. And maybe put a little powder of ginger in there, maybe a few peppercorns in there, not too much because it'll become spicy, little cloves and cinnamon. So those top five, you can make your own little blend and make it proprietary to you. So I want to just say, I'm going to raise this cup of chai and I hope you raise your own cups of chai wherever you are. And I want to wish everyone a great Mother's Day. A wonderful Mother's Day. I know it's a very hard time for moms. We're juggling, we're adding on additional roles in our lives, but I think all moms can handle anything that's thrown to them. So, um, you know, so I think moms are the best and I'm wishing my mom in India happy Mother's Day. And um, so I'm just raising this cup of chai to everybody. So, you know, enjoy your Sunday. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. If you make chai, Take a picture and send it to me on Instagram and tag me um, at Be Spiced. And um, yeah, and that's why I kept my brand Be Spiced because my mantra is don't be bland in life, guys. Be spiced. So I want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm just loving to, us getting to spend time here. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. There's lots of love in the chat, lots of gratitude to you. And we all learned a lot. I know that I did and I can't wait to take a break today and make a chai. This sounds like the perfect thing to do today. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us. This is wonderful. Happy Mother's Day to you, Sabna, and to your mother. <laughs> I think you. we all learned so much from our mothers and it's wonderful to see that kind of unfold in our lives so thank you for being with us here today we really appreciate your time thank you to all of you for joining us and do show us your chai tag b.spiced on instagram and slip with usa and let us see how your chai went and happy mother's day to all the moms out there and thank you all for joining us be well bye namaste